Hello everyone, this is Ogre Boy, and I'm going to do my review for Ready Player One. Um, the in the movie, uh, it's set in the year 2045, and um, well, so much has changed that uh, pretty much nobody really has anywhere to go anymore or anything except for. Uh, staying home and going into the virtual reality world of the oasis um and they create their own avatars at um different uh pop culture characters and stuff it's really cool um and then maybe the guy who created the oasis um puts up a challenge uh the person who can find three keys will become the owner of the oasis after he dies and everything because he's getting old and in bad health um, and pretty much the movie follows two groups of people uh, trying to find it the, the uh, fans uh, which I think are called gunters and then the uh, then a business company, I can't remember the name of it, uh, that are greedy and wanting to use it for business. Um, the, pretty much the whole movie follows the two different ones trying to get the Easter eggs and everything. Um, the, uh, the movie's made really well, a uh, great blend of live action and animation is when they go in the oasis everybody comes in uh, like animated video game characters and they look a lot like uh, today's video game characters. I thought that was really cool. There were so many different uh, references to different classic movies and games and stuff that that's probably going to take a hundred times for me to watch it to catch every single one of them but um it was really cool how they did that and the, the story's pretty fast paced and everything first 30 minutes are maybe a little bit slow but um it gets pretty fast paced and all the characters are really likable um the cast was really good uh the main character is played by ty sheridan who is becoming a really good actor he's been around for a few years now and um ever since i saw him in mud i've been a pretty big fan of him and everything and he does a really good job in this and um i'm looking forward to seeing him in cyclops again and uh X-Men Dark Phoenix next year. Um, I thought he was a good choice for Cyclops. But he does a really good job in this movie as the main character, Wade Watts. And uh, um, Olivia Cook plays his uh, friend and becomes his love interest. Uh, her name is Samantha. And she's. She, does a really good job in this movie too she's likable and the two of them have really good chemistry together um, uh, Ben Middleson who uh, was in uh, Row One uh, is the villain in this movie and uh, his name is Nolan Sorrento and he does a really good job as the villain um, Oh, he was one of the best, one of my favorite things about Rogue One and everything. And I really liked him in this one too. He was really menacing and stuff. Not not quite like he was in Rogue One. He wasn't quite as dark and seemed as evil as he was in Rogue One. But he did a really good job as the villain in this. Um, and then uh, and Mark Pro Rylance, uh, who's worked with Steven Spielberg on, uh, he was in Bridge of Spies and the BFG, 
Um, he does a good job. He plays the man that uh, creates the uh, one of the creators of the Oasis. The other creator is played by Simon Pegg. Um, but he plays the, the main creator, the one that sets up the Easter egg hunt uh, and everything. Um, but yeah, all the cast members work really well in this. T.J. Miller is also in it. Um, he plays uh, one of the guys that gets the weapons and stuff for Derek for the villain and everything. Um, but uh, the cast was really good. Um, the I think my, uh, yeah, and the, the movie is directed by Steven Spielberg, who's my favorite director of all time. He's, and he does an excellent job with this movie. I wanted to see it from the time I heard about it because I knew he would do a great job with it, and he, he really did. Um, in fact, uh, it's made me realize that, uh, that if they ever were to do a live action version of the Iron Giant, he would definitely be my top pick for it. I kind of doubt that'll ever happen, but um, I think this is probably the closest we would even ever get to that, but um, I, think that, I think it would be awesome. Uh, but he was, he did a great job directing this one, like he does everything he directs it. Uh, Alan Silverstreet does the score and uh, it was really good uh, had a really epic feel to it and everything and they also had quite a few uh, classic 80s songs that were really a really good soundtrack um, but um Normally, John Williams does the scores for Steven Spielberg's movies, but he decided to do The Post instead of this one, and I'm actually really glad he did in this time. Uh, Alan Silverstreet just did a really excellent job doing the score for this movie. Um, the cinematography by uh, uh, Janice Kaminsky is excellent he, he does the work on does the cinematography on most of steven spielberg's movies ever since uh chandler's list i think he's done all of them since then but i'm not for sure he might have missed a few of them but i think he did almost all of them and he does a really good job with this one um, um movies based on a, a book by Ernest Klein, who Klein, he was who also uh, helped write the screenplay for the movie. Um, I haven't read the book, but I've heard that there are a lot of differences between the book and, book and the movie, which I'm not that surprised because Steven Spielberg always puts his own has his own own little twist on his movies that are based on books. Like Jaw, there was a lot of differences in between the book of Jaws and the movie. And same with, uh, um, Jurassic Park, but, um, I, I'm sure that, I haven't read the book yet, but I'm sure that the movie, even though it wasn't exactly like the book, I'm sure the movie still does the book justice, especially seeing that Ernest Klein helped write the screenplay, but, um, there, like I said, that there. This movie was a lot of fun. Um, I said the fir first, probably thirty minutes of it was a little bit slow, but not not too bad. Um, had a lot of awesome references. Um, probably, I think my favorite one would, my favorite reference in the movie was that uh, was when they showed Chucky from the Child's Play franchise. Um, 
but uh, there was just so many characters that I that went by so fast that and references that that's like I said it's gonna take a, quite a few watches to catch everything also uh, uh, I saw the movie in 3d and I'm not really a big fan of 3d because but uh, this one the 3d was really good on uh, it's probably the best 3d I've seen ever seen uh, and Steven Spielberg did a great job on that as well um, and it feeds it uh, or whoever was in charge of it, 3d um, did a great job on it uh, but anyway um, I'd give this one an 8.5 out of 10 because it was a really fun movie like I said it had some slow points but besides that I really can't really complain much else I know a lot of people said that the relationship between Wade and Samantha felt forced and stuff but it didn't really seem to bother me I kind of expected that it was gonna happen and everything but uh, like I said there was some really awesome nods and Easter eggs in the movie too uh, reference pop culture references and what was your favorite reference in the movie you can let me know in the comments um, but anyway that's my review for uh, Ready Player One if uh, there's any more movies or top 10 lists or anything you'd like me to do let me know in the comments and I'll get to them as quick as I can and thank you and have a good day